Hey guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. Um, I'm here with a pretty long video, I think. I have a few things to talk about. I have four FFOs, I think one finish. I have about six or seven starts, lots of progress, two retreats, uh, a lot to talk about. So let's get started. First, I'm going to start with all my finishes and FFOs because they're here on my lap and um, I want to get them out of the way. My table here is covered with retreat stuff. Um, the floor is too, and so is this table, and it's behind me. <laughs> and then all my whips are here. I think I'm going to have to do this video in stages. So, FFOs, uh, what do I start with? I, <laughs> uh, I um, bought some frames from theframeshop.com.au so I could frame a couple of my... Oops, sorry, that's my computer. So I could frame a couple of my uh, finishes. And... Here's the first one. Oh, the colour you are seeing is perfect. That's exactly the colour of the linen. The linen. Um, I think a lot of times it's really difficult to photograph this linen, so this is looking perfect now. So there it is. See it gets see it gets too this is too light when it comes close to you. The night forest wakes as the needles dance. Uh, this is the needles dance. It's by Hands on Design, Summer House Stitch Works and Ink Circles. It's a collaboration piece. Um, it was released at Nashville Market. Actually, it was released after Nashville Market, but I got mine at Nashville Market because it's a shop exclusive at my mum's shop um, until probably until next year. Uh, you can get the kit at mum's shop. I'm sorry, my words are coming out all in a jumble, <laughs> but I think you get the picture. Uh, this frame was not the colour I was expecting it to be. That's the risk of ordering frames online, I suppose. Uh, it's a bit more of a sort of greyish green. I was hoping for more like this tealy green here, here. Um, but I think it, I think it works. It's okay. It doesn't look cute. I think it looks super duper cute. Um, very happy with this finish. I laced it and I haven't covered the back yet. <laughs> but there you go, the night forest. Uh, sorry, the needle stance is what it's called. I'm very happy with that. This is a shop model, so I've got to return it to mum. But I wanted to show it off on the video. Uh, next is a finish. I think I hadn't finished this in the last video, um, but I was close to finishing. I finished it up. This is another frame from Frames Online. It is Anne Barson Loughborough by Plum Street Samplers. I love it. I really love it. It's so pretty. Um, this frame is from Frames Online. If you can see, it's like really cool and like aged and stuff. Uh, Frames Online has good prices, uh, but this was an expensive moulding. This was about $80, but the, that frame I just showed you was about $24. So they're pretty good prices if you choose the right mouldings. So yeah, Plum Street Samplers and Bells and Loughborough, 1837. It says, Hark from the tomb, a doleful sound. My ear attend the cry. Ye living men, come view the ground where you must shortly lie. Princes, this clay must be your bed in spite of all your towers. The tall, the wise, the reverend head must lie as low as ours. And then Anne Barson Loughborough, April 4th, uh, 1837, aged 11 years. And I'm really annoyed that you can't see the, the border so well on this fabric. Uh, except for this part where she obviously ran out of thread and had to use a different coloured thread. <laughs> um, if you buy this chart, there are two colourways in it. There's like an antique colourway and a modern colourway. Um, and I used sort of a combination of both and I kind of sub my own colours in as well. Um, they're mainly Victorian Moho colours. Um, so I kind of did my own thing and I put this on the brag table at the Plum Street retreat that I went to and Paulette saw it and um, she came over and she said, did you stitch Anne Barson Law for us? I said, yes I did. She said, you must be the only person who's ever bought that chart. <laughs> I'm like, really? She said, yeah, I love it so much. It's my heart. She said it's her heart. Um, but I, she loves the verse, but she said it just didn't sell. No one likes it. She's never, ever seen it stitched up except for the model, of course. Um, so she was really thrilled to see it, which that's nice. It's nice to hear from, you know, the designer or the reproducer, I guess. So I'm happy with this. Again, laced it. I'm really happy with my lacing. Um, thanks Stephanie for the, the lazy lacing tutorial. <laughs> um, I need to cover the back. I'll enter both of these into the Canberra show next year, I think. Um, uh, the next finish is also a Plum Street finish. Actually, you've seen the finish, but I FFO'd it. And it is a drum. Look at that. Isn't that cute? 
This is um, Yuletide Shanty by Plum Street Samplers. I love these little flowers and presents here. Uh, on the bottom it says, Old Saint Nick, he sails the seas, his beard grows long so he won't freeze. And there he is. I think he's adorable. Um, he is stitched one over two on a mystery linen. It looks like natural linen. Um, I was disappointed that these parts didn't meet up. It's because this is actually too big. I would have had to cut off a lot of the snowflakes and probably the moon as well um, to make it small enough that this met up. Or I would could have just this extended the stitching but the day I was making this was the, like the day before I had to go leave for the retreat and I didn't have time so uh, my finishing is pretty good I'm pretty happy with it I did follow Vonna's tutorial um as was and I looked for someone to finish this for me on the Australian uh cross stitch group and no one no one could do it apparently so I had to do it myself I was very reluctant to but I did it and I'm actually pretty proud of it it's got a nice weight because it's half filled with crushed walnut um, it's pretty solid, you know, it's not, it's not curvy. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I didn't like this part was just a massive white whale. So I try, I'm going to try and I guess put it like that or something. So cute, right? But I do love this and I do love the verse and I'm very proud of my finishing. So yay. Um, and then the last FFO, um, she's, she's big, hang on. Yeah, I'm not even going to be able to get it all in. <laughs> there it is. I'm just going to hold it up so you can see. That is Sarah Brazier. 1827. I don't remember. <laughs> 1829? 1829, yes. Um, I got this frame professionally. I did not do this one myself. It's a beautiful frame. Um, the framing cost $360. The moulding that I really wanted was going to cost me nearly $600, so I went for the second best, but I still think it looks gorgeous. She is hanging up um, in my house, in my, um, basically when you walk into the house, you look straight ahead and there she is, <laughs> there she is above the dining room table. Uh, I'm very proud of her, so proud of her. I took her away to the Mittagong retreat this weekend and put her on the brag table and a lot of people came and talked to me about her. Um, she's lovely. Very happy to have her finished and up on the wall. I will definitely enter her in the show, believe me. Um, okay, that's it for the finishes. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm going to put this away. So I'll pause this and then I'll come back and do some retreat chat. So, bonus puppy. Hello. She's so cute. She's nearly two years old. She's fully grown now and she's lovely. She's so pretty. She's my stitching buddy. Okay, off. Good girl. <laughs> okay. Um, first, I will talk about the Plum Street Retreat. That was the retreat put on by Linen and Threads. Paulette Stewart herself came out to Australia. Um, it was in uh, Terrigal. Um, and I really enjoyed Terrigal. Tim actually came away with me for the weekend. Uh, we had a nice weekend. Um, it was good fun. Paulette is lovely. She's the nicest person. The nicest person in the world. She took a lot of time to come around and talk to everyone, sit at the tables. Uh, she had a good chat. She was fascinated with Australia. Um, and she loved the Australian animals. She apparently went to see the pelican feeding. And so she hinted that her next stack might be a pelican stack. <laughs> or an echidna stack. <laughs> um, so look out for that. That'll be fun. Um... Um, what else? There was a brag table and I put my two Plum Street finishes on the black brag table, blag table. <laughs> um, I also had a couple of new Plum Street starts, which I'll show you later after I talk about retreats. Um, they had a pop-up shop, uh, at the retreat, but it was all just Plum Street charts. Um, they also sold their, their fabrics and I bought a few pieces of fabric. I got Picture This Plus Legacy, I got Wig Style Wig Straw on the Zweigart base. And I got a, a meter of the, <laughs> a meter of fabric. It's the uh, linen and threads, they dye their own fabric now. They're using some of the old stitches and spice formulas. So I got a piece that, I don't know if they call it Celtic, but it's Celtic. And I'm so happy because I started the Takata series on, on Celtic. Takata 2 by the Drawn Thread. I started that on Celtic and so 
now I have a meter of it, I can finish them, the series on the same fabric, so I'm pleased about that. Um, we got a, um, there was a retreat exclusive, um, Paulette designed this, this chart for the retreat, the Australian retreat, and I think it's exclusive to Linen and Threads for a year. Uh, and we got the full kit to stitch it. And I'll show you. So Paulette found this antique sampler. Um, I do have a picture of it on my Instagram if you're interested. I don't want to edit my video today, so I won't put it in. Um, but you can look on Instagram. She found an original sampler and she actually took elements of it and the color palette of it and made it into a sort of Plum Street style sampler. She Plum Streetified it, she said. Um, so here it is. It's called My Early Days. You've probably seen it online because it seems to be quite popular. A lot of people really like it. Um, I think it's very cute. I love how the grass goes over the border at the bottom there. Um, that pop of blue in the sampler is amazing. It's so nice. The verse says, Now in my early days, teach me thy will to know. Um, I like the, the sheep and the deer with the crooked legs and these trees on the side. I think it's very pretty, but I'm never stitching this because look at the house. Look at the house. Um, yeah, I'm never stitching this. <laughs> um, so, but we did get the full kit. So here are all the all the threads. There's lots of specialty threads. And there are... Um, it, it actually calls for a fair few DMC threads. Um, Paulette tries to... I've noticed if there's only a few stitches of certain colours on her charts, she'll actually note it. There's only a couple of stitches. And I've noticed with her new releases, she's actually been calling for DMC threads instead of specialty flosses if there aren't so many stitches, um, or if there's no good, no good specialty thread colour match. Look at that blue. Oh, love this colour. These colours are Kapari and Ocean, Wix Dye Works. Um, and we also got, I think this is 36 count vintage bee wax, bees wax. Um, so I have the full kit here and I'm never going to stitch it. So what should I do with it guys? Uh, stay tuned till the end of the video <laughs> and you'll find out what I'm going to do with it. Hint, hint. Hang around. Okay. So, that was really nice. I guess, um, well, it also gifted us a chart, um, one of her new releases. I can't remember what it's called and I've already given it to someone. <laughs> it was a Christmas, a Christmas design. It was cute. Um, and then we got a Stitches gift bag. So here's our Plum Street Samplers gift bag. And inside is a flyer for next year's Plum Street Retreat. Paulette is coming back. And a candle that smells quite nice. And some bath salts with a sticker that hasn't been drawn off properly that smells horrible. And that's all. That's our gift bag. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, Ash. Um, yeah, but the retreat was fun. The venue is really nice for a retreat. It's not so nice to stay there. <laughs> Apparently there were problems at the hotel. Um, but it was, it was nice. The dinner on Saturday night was really nice. My husband came as well. We ate a lot of oysters. Um, a lot of seafood, actually. Uh, Paulette was so lovely. She was... I think Nora is a bit shy, so when she comes, she doesn't spend as much time talking to us. Paulette was with us the whole time, talking to everyone. It was great. Um, so that was the Plum Street Sampler Retreat. So that was about two weeks ago. And then this weekend that's just been, as in yesterday, day before, I went to the Michigong Stitches Retreat. Um, I wasn't going to go to this retreat. I hadn't booked I thought I had already booked into the Plum Street retreat months and months and months ago, like a year ago maybe. And I just thought I wasn't going to be able to afford it because I'd already taken one weekend off for that retreat. And then um, I just quit my job because I've got a new job coming up uh, with a big pay rise. Um, and I decided I have a lot of sick leave to use and I could afford it because I'm getting a pay rise. So I decided to take the weekend off and come to the retreat. And luckily, <laughs> Kerry was able to fit me in the last minute uh, literally the last minute like the night before <laughs> um, which I'm really thankful for um, 
yeah, so I just rocked up, paid my, my 50 bucks and spent the weekend stitching with lovely people. Um, it was a really fun retreat. It was just in the CWA. In Australia, we have a thing called the Country, Women, Country Women's Association. Um, and they, they exist in most country towns and they will have, they have a hall that they let out to people and we borrowed the hall. Um, it was a good size. It was a bit cramped with 50 people, but we all fit. We had pop-up shops, we had um, Silks For You, we had um, Fuzzy Fox Designs, Jay's X-Stitch who does um, natural hand-dyed fabrics, um, Taryn Teaser Handmaids who does project bags and tote bags and stuff. Um, I'm going to be Ka uh, Carrie the Creative Curator. She um, makes uh, chain mail, scissor fobs and zipper pulls and jewellery and ornaments and stuff. Um, I think that's all. I think that's all. Um, it was really great. It was so good to have um, 50 Australian stitches in the room. It's amazing. I think I knew close to half of the people already. Um, lots of people I knew. Lots of good friends. I made new friends. Had really good talks with a lot of people. Um, it went for, I think it went for four days because I only went on Friday and Saturday, but I think it also was open on Thursday and Sunday. Um, I didn't stay in Mitigong because it was so last minute um, and also because I was ovulating so I had to get home. <laughs> um, not pregnant yet, thanks for asking. Um, uh, it was great fun. I spent a lot of money. Let's talk about the, the Stitches gift bag at the Mitigong retreat and compare it to the Stitches gift bag at the Plum Street retreat because wow. Wow. Um, so, we got a few freebies. <laughs> Just a few. Uh, this is so cute. This is so cute. I love, I really like gum nuts. Gorgeous gum nuts. It's a freebie kit. It's got a full color chart and a regular chart. Uh, and it is by Fuzzy Fox Designs. And she had a pop-up shop there. And she had the cutest little, you know, the worm, the blue worm from Labyrinth. She had a little um, model of that there, but she didn't have a kit available. Because I probably would have bought it. Um, anyway, she's on Etsy. You should check her out. Um, Wild Violet Cross Stitch. Right, everyone knows about Ryan now. Um... She made a koala biscornu, very cute. Um, there was a model there of this, it was super cute. Um, 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 um. She also, I'll show you in a minute, she also contributed something else for our bags. Uh, this is the official Mittagong Stitches Retreat freebie. Let me hold it like that. Mittagong Stitches 2019 Retreat. And this even came with fabric and threads. How good is that? I love, the, I love those colors. Uh, silks for you. I don't know what color and I don't know what the fabric is, but that is cool. I love that. I, I probably won't stitch the freebie, but I do like that. that. Um, <laughs> we got some cool charts from Fiddlesticks AU. This is hilarious. Ooh, is he the Toy Story aliens? Ooh. And on the other side, what the cluck. <laughs> um, everyone got different charts, so I'm interested to see what other people show. I love this. <laughs> um, Lindy Stitches, Stephanie, thank you, Steph, um, designed a freebie for us. It's super cute. I'm trying not to show you the chart. Turtly Lovable, that's what it's called. Turtly Lovable. And it's a little turtle delivering a Valentine. And it says, You can probably stitch this adorable turtle a lot faster than he can deliver his Valentine, even though he's in a hurry. I can't guarantee you'll look as cute though, because <laughs> that is a very cute turtle. Um, and for some reason I have two of those in my bag, so hit me up if you're interested. Um, Turkish Tile by Works by ABC. Um, That's My Jam. It's a cat freebie by Abigail Johns. And uh, a Bendy Stitchy. Uh, release this is called Kerglaf and I'm guessing this is a new series Michelle's gonna do which is a great idea I like it it says Kerglaf here and then around here it says the shock felt in bathing when one first plunges into cold water <laughs> and there's a guy in a cold bath and then there's a gravestone that says Murphy 1884 Morphe 1884 so I can't wait for Michelle to tell us more about this I love this little tiny willow tree I might just stitch that part the grave in the willow tree. Anyway, thanks Michelle. 
Um, then we also got some Color Streams Stranded Cottons. Color Streams is an Australian dyer and they do um, silk and cotton embroidery threads, ribbons, fabrics, and wool tops in over 60 colors. But they're very pretty, variegated colors. Uh, we got three needle minders, one from Sassy Devils, and it's a Tasmanian devil wearing a crown. And two little needle minders from Cranky Stitch. We've got some little counting pins from, just a minute. These were made by Christy, Stitching Mum with Two Monsters, and it is Once Upon a Needle Minder. Uh, she has a Facebook group. So they're cute. I think I might stick these in my, um, my drum, my old St. Nick drum, because they're Santa Claus. Um, Jay's X Stitch. We got a freebie. I'm covering it up. That's a kangaroo. We also got some threads. This is a stranded cotton, and the one behind is actually silk pearl. So that's nice. Crinic's good. They they seem to do freebies for retreats often, and that's really good because they're a company who knows that we're their target audience, and they should be advertising to us. So they gave us um, a few metallic threads on a card. I really like this bottom one um, but this is really weird like flat ribbon I don't know how can I show you this it's like a ribbon it's flat it's weird I don't know how I'll use it but let's find out probably for um embellishing a finish and then they also gave us a color card which is really cool because I can use this to convert into rainbow color <laughs> thanks so I got um thanks Krynik okay uh and then the best part of the freebie bag was the bag. Oops. Ta-da! Death Before D-Stash. Wild Violet Cross Stitch. I'm all about Death Before D-Stash. That is my motto. Um, Wild Violet again. Thank you, Ryan. Amazing. Amazing. Um, and we also have a, a um, scissor fob from Kerry, the creative curator. Go check her out on Etsy. She does the chain mail I was talking about. With a little stalk scissor charm and 2019. How cool, oops, it's backwards. How cool is that? So, I love it. I love it. So, compare the value of all that stuff compared to the uh, candle and soap that we got from Linen and Threads. And let me tell you that the Linen and Threads retreat cost nearly nine times more than the Minigong retreat. Just saying. I mean, it's great to have Paul let out. That's a, that's a once in a lifetime experience, I guess. But, you know, we just paid too much for the venue, in my opinion not worth it so 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 yeah this retreat has really set a new standard for me in retreats um it was a million times better than other retreats i've been to <sighs> carrie and michelle uh did a great job organizing they must have spent a lot of time contacting people to get freebies for us to set up shops they had raffles, all the proceeds went to charity. It was a really good charity too. It's called Share the Dignity and they provide um, sanitary products to people who have trouble accessing them. Um, it's something that a lot of us just take for granted and I consider it a basic human right to, um, <laughs> to be hygienic during your time of the month. So I think that's a fantastic cause. Um, we had door prizes. We had the amazing brag table, a freebie table, uh, it was just fantastic. Such a good weekend. So good. I'm really glad. I oh, we had an exchange, a smalls exchange. Um, I made a Prairie School of Fairy, and I don't have a photo of it. Um, I FFO'd it the night before the retreat at like 2 a.m. Uh, and I don't have a picture. Um, but Laura X Stitch won it, so she might have a picture or put it on her video. Um, and I actually don't even have the one that I got. <laughs> I think it was stitched by Emily. And after we all opened our um, our little smalls, we all put them back on the table to display so everyone could see everybody else's. And because I was leaving early, I actually forgot and left it on the table. But Joanne is bringing it home for me, so I will have it soon, but I can't show it to you now. But also in my packet, um, she, uh, there was a gift, and it's this thermos. Uh, Mar Marini Ferlazzo Collection. Uh, it's a double wall stainless steel vacuum insulator bottle and it has this beautiful cockatoo on it. If you can see, 
so floral, it's so floral, floral cock, a floral cockatoo. I think this is a cockatoo, right? Is that a cockatoo? A rosella? I think it, I think it's a cockatoo. Someone please correct me. I'm not that into birds. <laughs> um, but yeah, very pretty. And you know what? This is, it'll keep things hot for eight hours and cold for 24 hours. So I'm going to use it actually. I've never been, I've never used a thermos, but I will use this. So I'm happy with that. Then I did some shopping because why not? Right. Actually, before I talk about shopping, I won a raffle. Um, I bought a bunch of tickets and put it all in one bag because I knew exactly what I wanted. You are going to die when you see this. I won a freaking Omenic factory frame. Uh, is this the Millennium or the Quantum? Anyway, it's the Omenic one with the plastic bits, which is the, which is the one I already have and I already love. I like the plastic bits. They're sturdy. They're good. I don't have a problem. And this is 60 centimetres by 15 centimetres. So that was a pretty good price. I'm pretty happy that I won this. Um, I do already have some of these, so I kind of feel a bit bad for winning, but not that bad because I've wanted more anyway. So this is really good. And also I should be starting a Chatelaine soon that will probably fit on this. So, hooray. There might be a bang because I'm putting this down on the table. Okay, sorry. Um, I bought this. There's the floor stand. Um, because I find that I can't really use those Omenic frames on my Lowry stand. Um, because it sort of just falls over. They're quite heavy for the Lowry. But this should allow me to rest the frame on here like that. Um, it's this. I bought this second hand from a friend, so it was really cheap. Really cheap. Crazy cheap. She's very generous. What you do is you move this part here up and down, and that allows you to change the angle of the... <coughs> I'm not showing you very well. Move this part here up and down. It allows you to change the angle of this of the neck, so you can stitch lower and higher. Um, and of course, you can you can widen these and tighten them as you need. So that was seriously a bargain, and I just got it on a whim because it cost next to nothing, and I thought it might come in useful. Um, I bought a tote from Taryn. Um, T's her handmaids. T dot Z I R. Handmaids. She makes project bags and pouches and all sorts of things. And I bought this gorgeous tote from her. <sighs> I love this fabric. Um, I actually do have a project bag in this fabric that I don't think I've shown you. I bought it from Carissa's Life D Stash on Instagram. And I was so pleased to see this tote in matching fabric. And this tote holds a lot. Like, look how look how wide that is. The, the zip, where the zip is, super wide. It's nicely lined. Um, and she always includes a scissor, no, what does she call it? A zipper finder, uh, which is very pretty. I might swap this one out for a different one because I bought some more of her zipper finders. I'd like a little jewelry like that. So yeah, I love this. I'm so happy with this. It's already full of stuff because I took it to work yesterday with a whip in. Um, and Taryn's stuff is a super good price. She should charge more. She really should charge more. But until she does, we should all take advantage and buy as much as we can because her prices are super good. Just saying. Just saying. Even if that was American dollars, that would be a good a good value. Um, I bought some some zipper jewelry, as I was just talking about. Uh, from the creative curator, that's Kerry who ran the retreat. I got two little zipper finders. This one. There we go. This one with um, what are they called? Acorns on it. This one with an elephant. I don't have a bag yet with, um, I don't have a bag yet that I'll put this on. I love elephants, if you didn't know. I love elephants and ladybirds, they're my favourite. Um, so, I made a bunch of project bags before I went to the Palm Street Retreat as well. So, I will show you them when I get to whips. Because I've got whips in them. Then I also got some more um, zipper jewellery from Taryn of Teaser Handmaids. Um, these are $3 each. Can you believe that? So there's a purple one. I love the, the leaf on this one at the bottom. That's a nice green one. There's a pink moon face. 
and sort of a greenish leaf at the bottom. I love this square bead, cubic bead. It's a cube. Oh gosh, the light's really funny. It's a cube and on each side of the cube there's a shiny dot in the middle. Very pretty. And <laughs> Taryn said this one was a golden snitch. <laughs> See? Cute. So I'm happy with my little jewellery. I love it. I love it. I'm going to stick all of those on my new project bags as soon as this video is over. You know I've been trying not to use stuff that I've got because you can't use it until you show it on the vlog tube. Um, lovely Sandra gave us a gift. Um, some face washes. I already have one navy blue one from her so now I have a pair. And she also gave me this beautiful um, sort of red and tan stripey. And it's the beautiful, I think it's um, cotton... I think it's 100% cotton wool, um, so it's really good for using as a dishwasher or a face, wa face washer or whatever, whatever you like to use it for. So I really love those. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra. Um, and then the thing that I actually really wanted to go the, to the retreat for. Um, yeah, I, this is the, kind of the whole reason I wanted to go, is that I got some hanks of silk from Silks for You. Silks for You had. Um, they had a stand with all their colours on in individual skeins and then they had at least one skein of every, at least one hank of every single colour there. So um, they have, their hanks are really cheap, they're $44 each, which are, it's, it's about $30 American. Um, and on a hank you get 280 metres. Um, so for comparison, a gentle arts floss is five, five yards, which is a little, it's about five metres, a bit less. Um, so two would be 10, two times 28 is 50, it's 50 something skeins of gentle arts and it only costs 30 US dollars or 44 Australian dollars and it's silk. So I have, and she also has an amazing deal where if you buy five hanks, you get six, the sixth one free. So for $220, I got six times 300, um, skeins of gentle arts in silk. And here are my colours. Oh my god, they're so beautiful. Okay, I'll show you. Ready? So this is uh, PR068. Beautiful. Uh, purpley red with black. I love this. Oh my god. Um, it's quite high contrast, you know, as you can see between the black and the, the red parts. Actually, it's showing up a lot brighter red for you. It's actually much purplier. Um, yeah, but it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Um, that one was one I wasn't actually going to buy because I got one very similar. Uh, but when I was choosing my sixth one, I just decided to choose one that was fun. So this is PR067. And this is my favourite one, I think. This is sort of browny, purpley red brown, you know. Uh, and it goes from red to brown through purple, obviously, because I just said purpley red brown. So why don't I say all the colours again? And that is PR067. Don't know if you can see that. So I love that too. Um, this one is sort of a charcoal colour, PR070. It's it's basically black charcoal. It's not black, it's charcoal. Um, if you look closely, there are like some bluish parts and some more charcoal-y parts. But it's essentially a solid. Almost per almost solid. Um, I love this colour. I'm really into gold colours lately. This is PR060. There we go. It's a lovely gold. There is some very variegation in there. This this part here is much lighter than this part here. Um, but I did notice that there's some horrible mist eye spots on here, which is a shame. Uh, it's not just there. There's a few others as well. It's a bit of a mess. A bit of a mess right there. But I can just cut those out. It should be fine. <laughs> Should be fine. I mean, I have 280 meters. It should be fine. So that's PR060. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, I love this. I might use this for Quaker Seasons of Friendship, which I'd like to start soon. This is PR130. It is sort of a yellowish green, sap green. Very pretty. Why haven't I been holding them all up here? Ooh. Um, and then the last one, this is the one that P 
people were crossing the room and coming to my table to visit because they kept hearing about how gorgeous this is. And this is really amazing. Hang on, I'm trying to twist it up so it looks good. There we go. Oh yeah, that's showing up pretty well. Uh, this is PR124, I think. 124, yes. Um, and it obviously goes purple, navy blue and teal. Gorgeous, right? Gorgeous. The teal isn't showing up as well for you. It's a very vibrant teal. Um, yeah, this is beautiful. And if you see it from far away, you could kind of be forgiven for thinking it's kind of just a dark purpley blue, just solid, but actually it's variegated. It's very beautiful. So those are my six hanks of silk. Yes, that cost me a bit of money, but I have been trying to buy these silks for two years. And I keep putting them in my cart and then not wanting to commit because I'm just not sure about the colours. You know, it's hard to tell on a computer screen. Um, so I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to see them in person and choose the ones I wanted and I'm so happy. And I don't have plans for any of them. I just got them because I like them. Except this one. I think I might do Quaker Seasons of Friendship with this. It's a gorgeous colour. So that is, I think, all of my retreat haul, retreat talk. Um, I think, <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to pause the video, pack all this retreat stuff up, and then I'll come back and talk about my progress, whips, uh, and my new starts that I made during Sampler September, and, and I think that's all. Okay, so I'll come back. Okay, let's get going with whips and new starts. Um, so we had... Uh, dark, Octo dark October stitching and I didn't um, do a lot of Dark October stitching but I put a little bit of progress into probably my only darkish whip uh, which is Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs this is my working copy don't hate um, everyone's seen this I think a lot of people really love this I'm stitching it on 40 count flea market brass from Kitten Stitcher um, and I did not get very much done. I started this last year in December um, and I just did a little bit more work on the house there. So, there, oh, it's going all... <laughs> the colour you're seeing here is the colour it actually is. When you look at the picture of this, a one, two, three stitch, it looks like the fabric's very yellow. The picture here actually shows the fabric more true. It's, um, I think it's sable. Yeah, I don't remember what the... Mink, it's called mink. Um, and it's much more like that. Um, but I liked the warm colour that it looked like on the picture on 123 Stitch, so I chose this very yellowy fabric. Uh, and here's my progress now. Yeah, it just cooled. The camera just cooled so you can't see the colour well. But all I did was the house. This is the Wicked Witch Needle Minder, <laughs> enticing you with a potion. Uh, and that's all I did. Not very much. But I actually enjoyed stitching on it. You know, I don't do houses. But this house is pretty uh, interesting. Uh, so... It is not as boring as how I usually experience houses. So, I'll pack this one up. Sorry, there's going to be a lot of crackling because everything's in the bug bags. And I didn't take the time to take everything out before we started and I'm putting everything away so I don't have to clean up for an hour afterwards. That was just a little bit of progress. Um, I've been working on And a Forest Grew a little bit. This is And a Forest Grew by Rosewood Manor. Um, you can see there's like a big circle here, and that's because I've got to the middle of the of the chart where the where the verse goes. Um, and that's why I kind of stopped because I'm ready to stitch the verse. Um, a couple of weeks ago at work, I did actually spend some time recharting it in Stitch Fiddle. Stitch Fiddle is a free online program where you can stick some, where you can, you know, just do some cross stitch chart charting yourself um so i kind of recharted it myself uh i might have to rearrange a couple of things but it is going to fit uh, so my new verse is ready to go and don't know if i will stitch that before the end of the year to be honest i just don't know um i would like to so that i can come into the next year and just work on finishing that top left quarter um, that this will be a finish next year, which I'm very excited about. So, there, it's been a few weeks since I worked on that. Maybe a, maybe a couple of months. Um, 
I have been working quite a lot on the Udo Whale by Owl Forest Embroidery. This is the kit um, from Owl Forest. Sorry, when it's finished, it will look like that. Um, the kit comes with all the Owl Forest threads and so on, which are falling out of the box. And I'm nearly finished, as you can see. There's some water here and another ship. There's a few more uh, motifs in the sky. Uh, there are trees on top of the tail and there's this house. And then I'm finished. So, yeah, this will be finished maybe even in November, but pretty soon. Pretty soon. It's a few days away from a finish. So that's nice. Mm, oh my gosh, I don't have room for everything. Okay. Um, I also worked on a round robin, which was Sylvana's round robin, and what I stitched was the red pirate lady from Mirabilia, just her head, shoulders, head and shoulders, and the feather in her hair. And I embellished it with like paper flowers and an actual feather and lots of crazy beads that I had lying around. Um, but that has been passed on to the next person, so I can't show you. Um, and I don't, I'm not going to edit this video, so if you want to see it, you should go to Instagram because I have a good photo on there. Um, the other thing I worked on, the only other thing I think, was put something behind this so you, it looks better. Um, this might do. Nope, it won't do. It's better than nothing. This is Siren Jady by The Sampler Cove. Um, every time I show this, people go crazy over it. They, they ask, oh, what is that chart? Where can I get it? How, mu how much did it cost? What are you stitching it with? So this is gorgeous. I love this. I'm trying to make it so you can't see through and I just don't have anything behind it. That's a little better, maybe. Um, yeah, the colours are gorgeous. The patterns are gorgeous. So pretty. This is stitched in 32 count black Belfast linen from Zweigart. I'm using the call for threads, which are all silks, um, one over two. Uh, and the silks are a mixture of needlepoint ink, a vera soir, and bell soir, soir cristal. I, I don't really know what those are. Anyway, there are, and there's not that many colours. There are three oranges, three yellows, three greens, and the white. And I love this. I still have quite a lot to go. There's about that much more at the top to stitch. Got to finish all this. And then there's the bottom third to stitch with two giant peacocks. I think they're peacocks. Um, but I love this. It's really pretty. It's gorgeous. I love it. Okay. Um, and then I had a lot of new starts. Most of them were for Sampler September. Some of them were for... The Plum Street Retreat. Not that I need an excuse for new starts, but I'm just saying. Okay. These are not in any particular order. Ooh, hang on. I'm just going to grab the chart for this. Ah, how do I pause it? Okay, I started this at the Plum Street Retreat on the Sunday. This is Elizabeth Sarah Oliver by Plum Street Antiques. So it's another reproduction that Paulette did. Um, I cannot read the verse on here. Uh, so next time I pull this out to show you, I will write down the verse while I'm stitching it. So I can read it to you next time because it, this picture is terrible. I told Paulette I'm not happy with this picture and she agreed with me. Um, so there's the original on the back. Again, you can barely see it. I'm stitching it um, with the colourful colours on this gorgeous fabric which is from Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. I was in their Fabric of the Month Club for about three months and I'd like to resume it actually maybe next year but probably not because I'm trying to save money next year so I can pay for IVF. Uh, so this fabric is every bit as gorgeous as it looks there. It's actually more gorgeous than it looks there because you're not seeing the colours quite as good as they are in real life. It's, it's um greeny blue. You're seeing yellowy blue, but it's actually greeny blue. And Paulette herself approved this fabric. I showed her two different fabrics. One was Vintage Lentil by Lakeside, and one was this. And she said, this fabric will totally work. Um, it's not too busy, and there's so much coverage. The, the only thing she said was, this is so densely stitched, you might not see the colours so well. Um, but if you have any worries about it being too 
crazy mottled. The fact that it's so densely covered will hide it a little bit. Um, so, and this is my little start here. So obviously I've just started on the top left border. Um, this crazy chart actually has a border and then another border and then, and then I get to the middle. So I'm working on part of the double border. And that's all I've done. Um, that was just one day at a retreat and I haven't picked it up since. So I'm so happy I started this because I love it. And I've been eyeing it for ages. I wish I could give you a good colour representation of this because um, it's looking so yellow for you. And these, the colours that are on it are going to look gorgeous. So Paulette herself gave me the thumbs up. So that was a new start. I don't know how many new stars I have to be honest, I have not counted. We still haven't hit, hit, hit 50 whips yet but we might by the end of the year. Uh, the next, this was a sampler September start and I did end up starting ink circles, little, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> little alien schoolgirl, uh, working copy again. So it's obviously a um, making fun of, you know, the fact that the samplers we stitch are schoolgirl samplers. And this is what an alien schoolgirl sampler would look like. Reproduction of Roswell time capsule artifact from future colonial mission. <laughs> That's what it says. So it's super duper cute. I really like it. I, I'm thinking of the idea that, you know, in the future, um, what, what, what materials would a schoolgirl use? So I'm actually planning to put um, a lot of um, treasure braid in this to make it lots of metallics and very sparkly. I've gone for a pink and orangey peachy sort of mottled fabric. This is Valentine's Wish from x Design, which was Fabric of the Month from February last year. And I've made a pitiful start on this. There you go. That's it. So you can see just in the top corner here, I started this. I didn't have the sanguine, which is why I didn't keep going down here. And I've done a little bit of this. And that's it. Good work, Tash. Um, during Sampler September, I kind of um, started a bunch of things in a rush in the last few days. So I only got to work on them for a couple of hours when I started them. And I hate doing that because you don't get good progress. And when you come back to them, it's unsatisfying because there's nothing to show. But I'm glad I started this. I've wanted to start, wanted to start this for a really long time. That chart is still available. Someone keeps saying they're out of print. They aren't out of print. It's just that they're not available on Hoffman, this chart. Um, so if any shops want to carry it, um, you have to contact Ink Circles and ask them to send it to you because for some reason they're not on Hoffman. Um, but Tracy said yes, she can totally ship this out to any shops that want it. Um, I started this on the last day of, uh, not Mania, <laughs> the last day of Sample September. I think I was supposed to start up with Sin Swank, but she pulled out. How dare she? Sorry, there are lots of pauses in this video. I just had to pause for a cough and a drink. I've been talking too much. And um, I'm at 48 minutes now. This is probably the longest video I've ever made. So this is Hannah Gilpin, 1800, from Stitchy Box Samplers. And it's a Quaker sampler, but it's kind of a chaotic one, which I like. I decided to stitch it on a dark fabric. This is, it's a little bit darker than what you're seeing here. It's 36 count tobacco from Kitten Stitcher. Um, and I'm going to stitch it. There's the start I made, not very much. I'm going to stitch it in these colors, sort of light, pinky, tanny, white colors. So it'll actually be light on dark. I think it'll look Super cute. So that's all good. Now we get to the project bag stars. This is a project bag I made. Isn't it gorgeous? I love this fabric. All the fabric I'm going to show you today is tulip pink. Um, I made six. I've already put one in the post for a friend. And I'm very nervous about it because she's a quilter. Uh, so she will be... Uh, able to tell that my stitching is not very good <laughs> my sewing is not very good look it's functional it's just not that neat uh yeah it's fine but isn't this gorgeous look at the inside oh my gosh love it um so what's in here <gasps> this is beautiful this is 
probably my favourite thing that came out at Nashville this year. And I can't believe it's taken me this long to start it, to be honest with you. Um, you've seen this, a lot of people are stitching it. It is English Garden by Samplers Not Forgotten. Yes. And the Samplers Not Forgotten girls are gorgeous. I spent a lot of time in their room, um, partly because they had York Mint patties. And I was very much enjoying them. <laughs> um, and when I left, they said, take take a handful and take them home with you. Um, but I couldn't because you can't bring food back into Australia. Um, and then it turned out that I actually could have brought them because um, I took other chocolate and they were like, yeah, chocolate's fine. So I should have got a giant bag of York Mint patties. Oh. Um, but yeah, this is beautiful. Beautiful. Um, let me try to remember what the fabric I'm stitching on is called. Ah, Dark Mountain 46 count linen. That's X2 Designs. It's a greyish model grey colour like that. And here's my tiny little start. Obviously starting up in the top left corner, as I usually do. Not always, but usually. Whoops. There you go. So over here, there's some this border has so much work in it and this beautiful little roses. And I'm using the cold fork colours, which are all week style works, and it's going to be gorgeous. Ooh, I want to stitch on this again right now, actually. Right now. Love it. Love it. Ugh. Yeah, here are the cold fork colours. Ooh, so pretty. So pretty. So. I only have four more to show. Hang in there, guys. We're nearly there. And then the giveaway. Whoops. Did I say giveaway? Oh. English Garden. What's next? Another project bag. More, all, the, all the project bags are tulip pink fabric from the All Stars range. That's the inside. This inside fabric is a bit too busy, I think. But it's on the inside, so who cares? Oh, I love this. I love this. This is Long Dog Samplers, Beauty Spot. Um, there, there's a companion to this called Sunspot. Um, and I saw someone online stitched them one on top of the other, Sunspot Beauty Spot. So Beauty Spot here, Sunspot underneath is what I'm going to do. And I love this so much. Love it. I've made a small start. I'm stitching this on 40 count Verdal, which is just plain white Verdal is even weave. This is so I got. Uh, so 40 count even weave with the call for DMC. I'm trying to show you this without unfolding the whole thing because you know. So that's my start. I don't even know which way up it goes. That way. That's my start. And I'm just doing the clouds above the dodo here. There we go. There we go. I love this, this is so good. I am looking at my stitches here and I'm happy with how they look. And I'm gonna come back to another piece that I started on Vertle and I hate how my stitches look. But it looks like one strand of DMC over two on 40 count is great. I'm happy with this. Not having a problem with the fabric at all. So. Um, yes, I think these are going to be bright and colorful. They also have some sequins on them. Um, I've bought some they're called pay payettes, I think is how you say it. Uh, it's like the French word for sequin, but what they really are is they're actually made of metal. So this falls for gold and silver payettes to be all over it. And the, um, <clears throat> the chart does list a source for those payettes, but that source no longer exists. So I couldn't get them from there. So I ended up going to um, Alison Cole Embroidery. She's an embroidery teacher in Australia and she sells payettes. Um, I couldn't get quite, I couldn't quite get the right size. I think it called for five millimeters and I had to get one color in five millimeters and one color in six millimeters. Oh, and it actually called for gold and bronze and I've gone for gold and silver because I just couldn't get, get them from the source that was recommended. So I had to make do with what I could find, but they are there ready to be sewn on at the end. I really like this piece. As you can tell, I love colorful pieces. I love old tapestry 
things, geometric patterns and spot motifs and things that look like old cruel embroidery. Um, yeah, that's why I love that. Uh, another new project bag. There's the froggies. Uh, and that's the inside. Not in love with this inside fabric to go with this, but you know what? It's close enough. It's only on the inside, so who cares? I love this. Okay, this is Maria Antoni by the S Sampler. And I thought, I've been talking about Mexican samplers for so long, I need to start one. So, um, she says that uh, these there is flame stitch patterns in this, which is up here and here and here. Uh, and those are really typical of Mexican samplers. She says she believes this one was stitched in a convent school. Um, so she was taught by nuns that came from Spain. So there are a lot of similarities here with Spanish samplers. Uh, that's really common with Mexican samplers. I know I promised a video of, of all the Mexican samplers I have, and I am still planning to make that, but not today. Um, I've actually done quite a bit of research. I have like a good little presentation, a little little speech about Mexican samplers and what I've learned and why I like them. Um, but I'm not ready to do it today, I'm sorry. So this um, stitches used are flame stitch, long armed cross stitch, reversible cross stitch, satin stitch, French knot, cross variations and double running. And it also contains spangles, which are payettes and a beaded section. Here is what I have done so far, which isn't very much. I did swap out the fabric. It came with a really sort of coarse natural fabric and I've swapped it for 14 count antique white. Sorry, 40 count antique white linen. And that's what I've done. Just one section, that's plain stitch. Plain stitch is essentially satin stitch. Um, yeah, so it's just beautiful. I love it. Um, obviously it's that top corner part there. I'm very pleased to have started this. I feel that I did that in one day um, in a hotel. Whoops, that's the back. One day in a hotel room in Sydney. Um, and I went out for a long walk that day too through the city. So I feel that I could stitch this reasonably quickly if I wanted to work on it. Um, and I do want to work on it. But I want to work on everything. So that's the eternal problem. I got this as a kit from the Assemblée. It's only available as a kit for now. Um, I don't know if she will, will release it as a, because of the colours, don't know if she will release it as a regular um, chart only, but I couldn't wait any longer and I bought it as a kit because I love it. And I think I got it last year. Yes, I think I did. Okay, only two more. Bubba, I scared my dog. Oh, I actually did finish something else. Um, in talking about Mexican samplers, I was reading a lot about Aztec stitch, which, which is a stitch that's unique to Mexican samplers. And I read a lot about it and I looked at all my samplers that I have and none of them actually have Aztec stitch on it, but I wanted to learn how to do it. So I I read about how to do it, I downloaded a little freebie that I use for inspiration, and then I just made a little Aztec Stitch freebie. If you want a, a, a little Aztec Stitch ATC, which I have since gifted to someone as their ATC. If you want to see it, you can look on my Instagram, because I'm not editing today. Um, but yeah, it was really pretty. Aztec Stitch was a lot of fun. It is a cut thread stitch, basically you stitch around the outside with four-sided stitch or satin stitch or whatever you want. And then you cut pairs of threads. You leave three pairs and then you cut the fourth pair all the way along and all the way down. So you've got like a crisscross pattern of missing threads and then you just wrap the bars. So that was, that was good fun actually. I enjoyed it, but it was very time consuming. Um, I wish I could show you, I wish I'd kept it. Another project bag. I love this fabric. I like these stripes and I like the inside. I love this fabric. Um, I messed this up because I didn't. You're supposed to do a stitch across here to hold the fabric down away from the zipper, but I didn't do it. So I'm not going back to fix it. I'm not unpicking this whole bag. Oh, this is another Plum Street Retreat start. This is 
Maxim and Zoya from Bond Street Samplers. It's very cute. Someone had this finished at the retreat on a, a green fabric. It was really cute. He is fabulous. Um, I, <laughs> I was kind of looking through my stash like, oh, what sort of fabric should I stitch it on? I kind of had the idea of stitching it over one on a 25 or 28 count. And then I thought, oh, I could just do something crazy, <laughs> which is what I did. Uh, this is a lot brighter in real life than what you're seeing. It's looking sort of like a soft yellow on the on the camera. It is bright yellow. It is medieval gold. That's what the color is called by X2 Design Fabrics. Uh, it's 40 count. No, I can't. I can't get the right color for you. It's 40 count, uh, and that's what I did in one day at the retreat. Actually, that's not true. I did this yesterday at the Minigong retreat. This and the bottom half of this flower. Uh, but all the rest I did in one day at the, the Plum Street retreat, which I'm pretty happy with. I love this. I love her, um, the feathers on her head. So cute. So Zoya is looking a bit unexciting, but Maxim is going to be amazing. So I really like this. I might try and finish it by the end of the year. I have quite a few, um, I'll talk about plans after. No, I'll talk about plans now. I have a few small things that I might be able to finish before the end of the year, probably two or three. This is one. Um, Sarah Tobias is one. Um, the Whale is one. So I think I might focus on finishes, but also I would like to finish one of my Prairie School Alphabet letters each year, and I haven't done one yet this year. And I also think I'd like to put some stitches in on one of my Hades. But I'm saying all of this and I have five weeks till the end of the year, so I don't know yet what I'm going to finish, what I'm going to do before the end of the year, but I will do it soon. Also, I'm starting a new job and there won't be any more stitching at work. I'll be working under five. So my stitching time might reduce, but I have stopped playing games. I've pulled myself off League of Legends and I'm not going to get back into it. I'm not letting myself. <laughs> so maybe my st stitching time will increase, I don't know. This is the last project bag, the last one I can show you. I sent one away, as I said. I love this crazy fabric, it's very bright. That's the inside. Cool. This is maybe my favourite thing I started, maybe, but we've got a problem, so let's talk about it. This is a peacock, a unicorn and a badger by the Scarlet Letter. A lot of people have seen this. People seem to look at it and go, oh, and then they go, oh, wow, that's, oh my gosh, that's amazing. It is full coverage. I will stitch the entire background. <coughs> I have started this on 40 count Verdal, um, which I have just dyed in Toprit so that it's not um, white. Because if anything shows through, I don't want bright white showing through on this, but this colour showing through should be fine. Um, and this is all I've done. <laughs> this is the little sun in the corner. Um, there he is, up there in the corner. He looks so cool. I love him. He's so weird. But I'm having a problem with this. I don't like the look of my stitches. And I don't think you'll be able to tell. Mm, focus. Okay. I don't think you'll be able to tell. But I'm not happy with my stitches. They look very messy. And I, I was stitching on this at the retreat on Saturday. And I passed it around the table to my friends and said, I just don't like the stitches. And, you know, I appreciate that people are being nice to me and saying, Oh my god, those stitches look perfect. What are you talking about? But... I know what my stitches usually look like and I'm not happy with this, okay? That's that's what I was trying to express. <laughs> this this might be good. It's it would be okay. You know, when I hold it back here, you guys can't see it at all. But I can see it and while I'm stitching on it, I feel horrible. I hate it. I think now remember I said before I don't have a problem with the the white vertel on the beauty spot, the long dog one. This is the same fabric, but I'm having a problem. So this fertile, it's an even weave, but it's it's not like Wigana. It's kind of stretchy. It's more like Jobelin. Uh, it's kind of stretchy. It's very soft and slippery. And I'm stitching on this with silk. Silk, this silk is all a verisoir. It's a little bit thicker than DMC, which might be where my problem is. And it's also slipperier than DMC. So some combination of the slippery fabric and thread <coughs> or the... Um, or the thicker thread. Something in that combination isn't working for me. 
and it's a shame but I'm going to restart this. I will restart it um, just on a 40 count linen, just any 40 count linen because I've used a Verisoir 1 over 2 on 40 count linen and not had problems in the past. So I've got a piece of mallow, a yard of mallow that I might pull out and use for this, but I also have a million pieces of 40 count linen. So this is going to get restarted probably as soon as I finish the Udo whale. I'll just restart it. Um, I might, I'm thinking about just finishing off the sun and just um, giving giving it away, finishing it into a little pincushion and giving it away because he is adorable, isn't he? Um, but I don't know. I don't know. But I, all I know is I'm going to restart that. Because <clears throat> I'm just not happy. Even though, you know, it would look fine, but I'm just not happy with it. So that's a restart. And that is everything I wanted to show you. Um, I bought a Chatelaine in the sale. Actually, yeah, so I have two, I will have two kitted up, hopefully by the start of the year. And I might start one at the start of the year, I think. I'll be really surprised if I don't, let's say that. Um, <coughs> I think I'm done. I'm losing my voice, so I need to wrap up. But important last thing. You've waited the whole video. It's been over an hour. I'm gonna give this away. This is the Plum Street Samplers, my early days. With all the, the full kit with fabric and threads, 36 count beeswax linen, even a needle is included. All the call for threads, specialty threads and DMC. And the sampler. This is exclusive to linen and threads. If you wanna buy it, you can buy the chart from linenandthreads.com. Don't you, maybe? Um, or you can buy the kit from them, and I think the kit they said is $130 Australian, which is about 80, 90, 80 to 90 dollars American. Yeah, yeah, that's how much we pay for cross stitch, you guys. There's like less than 10 specialty threads here, so that's how much we pay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so this is a generous giveaway. If you want it, please comment below. Just say something about Plum Street. If you have the words Plum Street in your comment, I will know that you want this and put you in the drawer. I will send anywhere in the world. <coughs> I'm gonna have to finish because I'm, I'm losing my voice. I'm coughing a lot. Thank you for watching a ridiculous hour long video. <coughs> I don't know when I'll be back because I'm starting a new job. See you later, bye.